I'm Teresa Maddich with Resource Investing News. Here with me today at PDAC is Ryan Castillo, Founding Director and Industry Analyst at Adamas Intelligence. Ryan, thank you for joining me. Thanks, Teresa. So when we spoke in December, you saw prices for some of the rare earths increasing this year. Has anything changed with that prediction? Nothing's changed with that prediction. Uh, when we spoke in December, we were forecasting that prices of certain heavy rare earths, namely dysprosium and terbium, would increase in 2015. And so far, we've seen a bit of a rally in that regard. Um, when we spoke in December, uh, we were also forecasting that the price of praseodymium oxide would decrease slightly going forward, while the price of neodymium oxide would increase, uh, effectively closing the gap between the two that was established in 2014. Um, so in looking at the China FOB prices so far this year, we see that praseodymium has come down about 15 or 20 percent, while neodymium has increased about the same amount. So it does appear that that gap is closing, which will be of interest to the magnet industry going forward. Sure. Yeah. And what's driving some of the increases in prices for magnet metals? There's really two major drivers, uh, the first of which was a boost in exports out of China uh, in 2014, and particularly uh, at the end of the year in the last quarter. Um, the second major driver uh, has been just increased demand from magnet uh, manufacturers themselves. So looking forward, uh, we think that that will continue to increase and, and is positive for them. You've also mentioned that the weak iron ore price mm -hmm. could be a boon for rare earth prices. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're seeing? It's not something that we're seeing as of yet, but if you consider that the, the price of iron ore uh, decreased by about half in 2014 and is still testing new lows in 2015, um, then it seems like a strategic option to, to leverage an increase in rare earth prices to, to kind of counter poor performance on the iron ore side of, uh, of the business for, for Baogang Group, which is one of China's largest producers. Um, the challenge with that approach is that Bayanobo is primarily a producer of light rare earths. Um, so if looking to increase the price of, say, cerium oxide, um, the, the, the owner is going to be looking at a market uh, that's in vast oversupply, and by increasing the price, they may allow a competitor to underprice them. So their hands may be tied in that regard. Okay. And what needs to happen for the rest of the world to reduce its dependence on Chinese supply of rare earths? Yeah, I believe that end users need to collectively embrace uh, a long-term view on, on sourcing rare earth supplies. And I also believe that they, they need to place a greater emphasis on sourcing conflict-free rare earth materials. So uh, what I mean by that is that they need to align with producers that are mining and processing rare earths in a manner that does not conflict with the corporate, social, and environmental um, standards that these big end users themselves promote. Uh, so if, if we do see any uh, advances in that regard, uh, perhaps in the form of uh, end users investing in emerging producers or uh, binding long-term offtake off agreements with them, I think investors would be far less reluctant to, uh, to consider investing in emerging producers outside of China. Okay. And finally, you've said previously just some juniors, you see them going back to the drawing board, coming out with new business models in light of the current market. Any juniors in particular you see who are doing that? Yeah. The, uh, the, the group of Rare Earth Juniors as a whole is, uh, is a very resilient and creative bunch. So we've seen a lot of business model adaptions and, and evolutions in recent years. Uh, a company that springs to mind is Medallion Resources, uh, which is aiming to source monazite concentrates from existing heavy mineral sands producers globally. Um, and it's also looking to, to partner up with a third party uh, to, to take these monazite concentrates uh, in which it will produce a, a high purity rare earth chemical concentrate and with this third party produce separated individual rare earth oxides at market desired specifications. Uh, another company with a bit of a similar approach is Pele Mountain Resources, uh, which is also looking to develop a monazite processing plant uh, in which it will source feedstocks from tailings and, and other supplies globally. Um, and another example is Texas Rare Earth Resources, which is a company that recently uh, announced a, a um, 
a staged growth development plan that sees it requiring a lot less pre-production capital to start the mine and helps align its eventual production with the, uh, the demand levels from, from end users. So there's another, there's countless other examples that, that are emerging and I think in 2015 we'll see additional projects coming out with, uh, with plans to, to scale back their grand ambitions for staged growth development plans that, that help de-risk the project for potential investors. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you, Teresa. I'm Teresa Maddich with Resource Investing News.